Friday to everyone. Today is the eve of the feast of the Nativity of the Virgin Mary, which is either celebrated by an evening divine liturgy or a liturgy tomorrow morning, since it's September uh, 8th. And uh, I hope that everybody has a chance to to, to wish happy birthday to the Theotokos, to the Mother of God. Um, also, I want to remind you about uh, subscribing at the bottom of these YouTube uh, videos if you wish to subscribe. And again, I'd like your your suggestions which I get occasionally, but not nearly as much as I would like. Today I, I went to um, give Holy Communion to uh, Bishop Basil's Aunt Louise, who was living for some time here in Tucson, and now she's returning back or returning to be with her son in Montana, uh, who is a, a priest. And uh, she's 92 years old. What a sharp mind. And it was a real joyous uh, occasion to give communion to uh, uh, someone who is can't make it to church. And... Uh, I just thought I would share that with you because when I was in Montreal, part of the uh, joy of priesting, especially in the early days when I could really do it uh, myself, personally, before the parish grew to what it is today, and... Um, like during Holy Week, I always made Holy Wednesday as a day to uh, go visit all the shut-ins and take them Holy Communion and to anoint them. And I loved it because these the elderly would say such appreciative things that no matter how tired you are, it invigorates you because they say, God bless you, Father. We love you. Thank you for coming. We know you're busy. I mean, they would just pour out all their love. And one of the things that maybe I, I could just say in parentheses, this is an important ministry for any priest to make sure that he knows the number of shut-ins that are under his spiritual care so that he will visit, commune, and during the holiday times make sure that they receive something special so that they are remembered and that they know that you as a priest care for them. And I really can't tell you how important it is. A couple of years ago, just before I retired, we have a, a string of buildings in, in an area of Montreal called Ville Saint Laurent. And they have all they have many buildings where they have 
independent apartments for the elderly. Something similar to what we built at, at, at St. George called L'Habitation St. George. Well, I was walking up and down Cote Vertu, which is the, the street in Ville Saint Laurent, and going in and out of these buildings to see these people, these these parishioners, and it started to rain, which I was unprepared for. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm seventy, whatever I was at that time, seventy four year four years old. What am I doing? Am I crazy? So I went into this one building. And I rang the buzzer, and the, the woman uh, welcomed me in. She served me a cup of tea, and and we talked, and I gave her a blessing, and we and she was highly intelligent, and we 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 had a really long long conversation. And then, no, please don't take this as pumping myself, but just something that happened. It just as I was getting ready to leave, she put her foot in the door so I couldn't get out. Well, I've had it. Sometimes these elderly ladies would say, oh, I love you. I want you to be my boyfriend. You know, sometimes they have these ideas. Anyway, she put her foot in the door and she said to me, you're not going to leave before I tell you something. I said, fine, I mean, please tell me. She said, I'm 85 years old, and you are the first priest I ever liked in my life. Thank you for coming, and God bless you, I love you. I walked out of there, you could see me two feet off the ground floating out of that building. I said, I guess it's really worth it. Even though it's a struggle, you got rained on, and you're tired, and chilly, but there was someone whose life you touched, and she was deeply appreciative, but they all were. I would go to apartments of some of these elderly women who'd be reading the Bible and asking me to explain what it meant. It's a whole kind of a different ministry, uh, giving care to, to the shut-ins. In our early days in Montreal, Father Joe Shaheen, who was at St. Nicholas Church, would go to the hospitals on Monday. We had like a circuit, we had a route, where the hospital, like a, like a circle. And he would let me know who was in. And I would go there on Friday and visit whoever he visited on Monday. And, and plus, if there's somebody new. And if there was somebody new, then right away I would, I would let him know who was in the hospital for his Monday visit. And we did that for years. And I, I can't tell you, I mean, what it meant to the people that the community, clergy, regardless of which church, cared enough for them that uh, we shared in this ministry together. And we also have, at the time, we had a, a house on what, what was called Coin Boulevard. It was the first Cedars home for the elderly. And we will alternate. When he, it was his time to serve, I would go to the house, because it was right on the way from his house, pick him, pick him up, and, uh, and then I would chant for him. And when it was my turn, he would chant for me. And again, we did this for years. And sometimes afterwards, we'd have, we would grab breakfast, Sometimes we cheat a little bit and have a little something before we went. But it was, uh, I think, a very special time in our lives. 
and these are happy memories that we as priests shared with our people and they and no matter what even though there was some kind of rival rivalry between the two parishes they knew that there was a mutual respect for the both of us and i thought it was it was cool you know we something that we did and and it was a wonderful time and the people that were living in the cedar's home loved that we came to visit them and give them communion and i guess i cherish those memories when father joe and i shared in two ministries, so to speak, shut-ins, hospital, and for the elderly at senior living homes. And um, this has been expanded much beyond now. I don't think you'll ever duplicate what we did, because now each priest does their own thing. And... Um, and I don't think they share what we did. Also, when, when we had funerals, Father Joe and I served at each other's churches at practically every funeral. Of course, sometimes it was wearisome. Sometimes I would rather have stayed home. But when you look back on it, the impact that it had on the, the people and on the families that the two of us were together and and we were sharing the grief of both of our parishioners. Sometimes there were very funny incidents. Like one time we were ready to do the Trisagion together and I guess there was an air bubble in the woman's mouth. And, and she went like this. And Father Joe said under his breath, she didn't shut up in her life, and she still won't shut up. Well, we started laughing. And we had many moments like that, that we had to swallow our laughter at different things that happened, even at the saddest times, when they would take the... Uh, the coffin on a sled on a hill, and all of a sudden the coffin would slide off the uh, the sled, and you'd see a bunch of men running after this coffin down the hill. It's like something out of a funny movie. And we, would, we couldn't help it but laugh. And sometimes we... <clears throat> I remember one time we started laughing so hard at something that happened, and they said, look at those two priests how much they sympathize with our grief. They're weeping with us. And we really weren't weeping. We had covered our head and we were shaking from laughter because someone said something very, very funny. And uh, because sometimes when we get to the, to the gravesite, some relative would want to get up and make a speech and butcher the English so bad that you did not understand what they were saying. Anyway, we had these incidents and they belonged to the treasury of our memory. And today, when we call each other, Father Joe being in Florida and I being in Arizona, didn't mean that we didn't disagree on certain things. But at the end of the day, I began my priestly ministry by stopping at Father Joe's on the way to to Phoenix when he was in when he was living in Indianapolis, him and Diane, and he gave me something that I have till this day. He said, I had this made and I want you to have one. A small blessing cross that I've carried with me for almost sixty years. And now that we're both retired when we speak to each other, we reminisce, maybe we gossip a little, but we share a great deal 
of the ministry that we shared together in Montreal. Now, why am I saying this? I hope I, both through Father Joe and myself, that we could communicate to the younger clergy that being a priest is not a, is not a nine to five job. And there's very little days off in the sense that we know. But we shared our priesthood together, that was important. And number two, we, we reached out to the people. They knew us and we knew them, all from both parishes, like the parable of the Good Shepherd. We called our sheep by their name and they heard us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God bless you.